Kyle Owen, well, we have to guess you are enthusiastic about the future for the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs with what the Marlies accomplished this year, turning it around. I think it's it's tough not to be enthusiastic about it, Todd. I, I think the we are enthusiastic, but the one thing we learned, especially this past weekend, is that we've, we've got some good pieces, but we still have a long way to go if we want to be an elite organization uh, in terms of it. And, and that's only speaking towards the number of high end prospects that we have, um, you know, up to nothing and go there. And you see some of the better players in the AHL that are still young and, and Detroit is a team that's it's in the playoffs every single year, have been for 24 years, and they're going to be a contender moving ahead and uh, their best players in that series, especially as it went down, were, their, were some of their best prospects. So it's up to us uh, as, ma as management to continue to, to bring in as many good young players as, as we can. We've got some good pieces. They were excellent down the stretch. And now it's just a matter of continuing to add to, to those players and not putting the weight of the shoulders, uh, the weight of the world on the shoulders of William Nylander, Connor Brown, Brandon Leipzig, and, and so on and so forth. Well, you look at how much time some of those pieces in Detroit and in the Grand Rapids situation have spent in Grand Rapids. Uh, is there a mind to be a lot more patient? I think that's a that's a luxury we one day hope to have, and uh, it's a it's a double-edged uh, equation. Uh, the first part is you've got to have good players up top that are significantly better than those players. That it takes them longer to usurp the the players ahead, and we have to continue to have an excellent development model whereby when those players are ready, we've got a lot of players that are that are here uh, cultivating and, and developing with the Marlies before they're ready to go up. So uh, this this weekend was a good reminder that uh, even though it was an exciting second half of the season that uh, it, not to do with the Marlies but as the, the Leafs overall got a long way to go and, and uh, we are excited about it though. One of the toughest positions to cultivate uh, is goaltending. Uh, were you happy with what you saw over the course of the season between uh, the two goaltenders? I think both goalies had their had uh, had their moments of, of greatness and both had uh, their moments of struggle and what we're looking to see in a goaltender is it's, it's a very difficult position to predict and what we're looking to see is which guys continue to bounce back when they struggle and uh, and which guys can level out their their amount of inconsistency we we know and we'll continue only to go with with young goalies you're not going to see a 30 year old goaltender brought in here to try to stabilize things and go on a run the experience that, that chris had in the playoffs and struggling a little bit it'll be good to see how that serves him through the summer and how he bounces back and then uh, to see Antoine finish off the year 5-0 and and then come in and play outstanding and give us a chance yesterday. It just goes to show you the amount of, uh, amount of development both accrued throughout the season. What's your assessment of the rookie class of Marley's? I, just, I didn't catch What's your assessment of the rookie class of Marley's? Uh, I was, I think the, with the rookie class there were so many rookies so we would be here all day. Um, but uh, I think I really like the way that the players went down to Orlando at the beginning of the year, and even someone like Garrett Sparks. I know he's not a, a pro rookie, but the way that, that 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 system worked out with Orlando was very encouraging to us, and, and we'll use it in a much bigger way next season. Uh, we've already begun conversations with their ownership and management about how we want to use it and, and how many players we want to have there all the time. But you know, if you, when you look at players like Connor Brown, I think when you talk about rookies in the Marlies, you talk about Connor Brown first and foremost, and he was just outstanding the entire season and. And um, you, you can't help but be happy with how we continue to progress throughout the year. When you take it one step further, you get into your Brendan Leipzig, William Nylander, Ryan Rupert, Victor Love, Tommy Nilsson, and we'll be here until 4 o'clock if we keep going. But uh, I, I think we're, I was excited how they developed, but I was excited in, in how much they played and how far they came along throughout the season. It was all, it's very encouraging, and it's a, it's a preview of where we're heading with this program with the Marlies in terms of empowering our young players and people and seeing them evolve and grow. So it was a lot of fun. A lot of those rookies seem to be uh, early season, mid season signings, guys who weren't part of the organization beforehand. Does, uh, does your research and, and uh, development team have any, I guess, kind of say or, or insight on adding some of those guys? I think we we use we're trying to use all of our everything that we have here with the Leafs to to our advantage and uh, every type of information we have to our advantage. Um, so we use we use our scouting reports, we use our research and development team, we use everything to try to to try to gain an edge and try to improve the Marlies with with good younger players. Byron Fraze, I you know Ben had coached him last season and I I was Byron's agent before a long time ago, so I've known Byron for eight years and. When I we were struggling to score goals, and he happened to be scoring a lot of goals in Cincinnati, and uh, and it scored at a very good level as a junior, so he was an easy one to recall. Knowing me, knowing him personally for a long time, and knowing his game uh, 
thoroughly and then Ben having coached him last year that was an easy one uh, and then the rest of the players that we signed on we used all of our resources with the Leafs and that's the way that we're going to continue to, to do things when we're looking for players for the Mar for Orlando the Marlies and Leafs as we move ahead. Safe to say there's going to be a bunch more of those next year too? I think we're we're already in the process right now of of and I think we've we've signed a lot of players for next year already. Whether it's Byron, Jack Rodewald, Matt Rupert, uh, T.J. Foster, uh, we've got a lot of players already locked into to contracts for next season. We've I think we've built up some uh, we've built up some confidence with agents and players uh, regarding you know if they come in here and they sign a, a two-way deal, they're going to be used with with the Marlies. It's not just as a favor to our ECHL program and. And that's worked very well throughout the season. So we're going to continue to try to be as progressive as we can and, and work in as many different players as we can all the time. Kyle, you were very adamant this year on guys like William Nylander and Connor Brown sticking and developing down here with the Marlies, no sure. matter how desperate it was for them right. to be able to leave. Right. Going into next year, seeing how they perform this year, is there going to be sort of an adjustment period where they stay down here a little bit longer, or is, do you think that's like the coaching? I, I think it. I think it's less to do with the coaches than it is up to the two of them uh, and every other player that wants to play for the Leafs next year. Our philosophy is not going to change as much as anybody wants it to or as much as people call for these players to get brought up. It's we'll, we'll bring them up when they're ready to be NHLers all the time, full time, without any doubt that they're going to be with the Leafs and stay with the Leafs for the rest of their career. We're not going to, you know, it would have been very easy this season to when things weren't going well in the last week of the season to say, oh, geez, we need a bit of a boost and some, some smiles and happiness and rainbows and butterflies with the Leafs and let's bring up William Nylander and Connor Brown. It would have been a massive disservice to William Nylander and Connor Brown to do that. And seeing the way that they continue to play, their disposition, their demeanor here, how they developed and evolved as players, it was absolutely the right decision. And we'll continue. That, that won't change just because the summer, I think, Going into the summer, as, as we get to training camp, people will start to write, well, is our Brown and Nylander going to be on the Leafs? That's going to have no effect on us. Our, our mandate and our strategy on both those players isn't going to change at all through the summer. It's see how they develop and evolve through the summer. They'll both get into plenty of NHL exhibition games, see where they're at, and know that we've got a, an excellent program here right down the road where they can continue to evolve and develop. Kyle, what's the organization's role leading up to training camp through the summer to keep sure these guys are developing the way you want them? Well, we have our development. We're going to do some new things this summer as an organization as it pertains to development. Um, a lot of players tend to stay around Toronto and, and, uh, and use our facilities on a voluntary basis, which is excellent. Uh, we don't want the players to feel that they have to be here. I know that there's sometimes that pressure that they feel like, oh, you have to be in Toronto, or otherwise it's going to be used against you when you, when you come back into camp. And it'll be the guys that, that show the commitment to stay in Toronto versus the guys that uh, stayed at home. We just want our players to be committed to maximizing their potential in the summer, whether that's in Toronto, Prague, Moscow, Sault Ste. Marie, wherever you have it. Um, th that's really what we want to see. And, uh, you know, for us, we'll send our people to see the players if they're not in Toronto to take away that uh, entire um, divide between the Toronto based players and the players that are based elsewhere. And I think you, you'll see us do as, as much as we possibly can with both on ice, uh, using use of video and using our development department led by Steve Steos, with Daryl Belfry, Scott Pellerin and Barb Underhill to make sure that we're, we're continuing to hammer home to these players exactly what they need to work on in the summer. We don't want any question marks w from them in terms of what we need to see from them in order for them to take another step next year, whether that step is NHL full time, whether that step is be a work their way up in the lineup here with the Marlies. You mentioned players are going to be ready when they're ready, so to speak. Right. Uh, what are you looking to see from certain guys? Does, does it kind of adjust based on the type of player and what the, the, the skill think you, you think they project, or is it just, you know, you, you just kind of know? I, I, I think it's every single player is different, and we have to treat every single player differently, especially when you're talking about something as sensitive as their development. We can't box ourselves into one way of developing every player. Every player requires a different type of development to, to maximize their potential, and I think that's, that's, what our, that's what we've encouraged the staff here to do with the Marlies, and more so our, our development staff with, with Steve and Scott and Daryl is try to look at every single player, every small little detail of their game and figure out how are they go where do they need to bring that portion of their game to be one day become a Toronto Maple Leaf. And so for every one of these guys it's different. For for Brandon Leipzig it's becoming more explosive so he can separate himself and use his skill uh, with the puck. Uh, for William Nylander it's continuing to, and I think you saw him throughout the year, he, the, the way that he was able to physically maneuver and, and outwit the, the opponents. And, and for Connor Brown 
uh, just to focus on those guys because we talked about them a lot. It's continue to just get stronger. Uh, with some of these guys, it takes a while naturally for them to to really become men. And, and he did a great job this year in terms of using his smarts and his speed and his skill level. Once he becomes stronger and grows into his body, it's it's a pretty scary uh, proposition. So we're, we're excited about that. Thanks, guys.